It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion. This is for Friday, the 6th of September. I'm Michael Groff. We continue with record or near record heat today. Some increase in moisture is expected tomorrow and Sunday, and that should give rise to some widely scattered showers and thunderstorms across northern Arizona. But here in Phoenix, we anticipate staying dry. Next week will also be dry across most of the entire state and temperatures to remain above average, although a gradual downtrend in afternoon highs is anticipated. And it wouldn't be a forecast if we didn't have a little bit of model mayhem, some forecast uncertainty way out there toward the end of the period, which, of course, we're going to talk about. But before we do that, it is Friday, and that means it's Photo Friday here. That's where we take a look at some of the photos and or videos that you guys have submitted. And first up... Uh, this is a picture from Joe in Queen Creek, a little sunset from earlier in the week. Get a little bit of rain trying to go on there, too, so kind of nice to see that. We'd love to see a lot of rain around here, and that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, then this is from David Parnell. The time last Saturday, the place, Pueblo High School, and it's hot, okay? It's hot, and it was a little bit muggy last Saturday, too, and that's... I mean, I guess that's football weather, at least here in Phoenix, that is football weather. And I don't know how kids do it. I don't know how anybody does it. I don't know how you even sit out there and watch when it's this hot. But people do it. And good on you for that. I get tired looking at it. All right. And then uh, this is from Beth, North Phoenix. This is from last Friday night. Gorgeous sunset going on there. Love the colors in that shot. You guys really outdid yourselves this week, all of you. Uh, this is from Buck. I assume this is up there in Montana. Sure looks like it is. Big sky country. And uh, hey, he's got some storms that are developing up there. And I'm jealous. We would love to see some storms around here. We're just waiting. We are patiently waiting. We're waiting for the monsoon to really get going. And it's not. And it's pretty much over with for us. But thank you, Buck, for those pictures. And then uh, Clayton, Hoboken, New Jersey, last weekend. And they had a little bit of weather up there, too, but nothing too bad. Of course, if you're up there in, in Hoboken, you're up there in New Jersey, if you, you know, you just take a look and there you go. You look west, there's that skyline, that Manhattan skyline. And then this is a picture from Clayton uh, that he shot uh, earlier this summer. He said he forgot to send it in. This is from Pine up there in northern Arizona. This is from back in June. And then David Nielsen up in the Sawtooth Mountains. And again, this is a great time to be up there, too. The, the weather is starting to change. We're pretty close to getting into that fall foliage season. The leaves changing. And going to be some great, great pictures, great opportunity for uh, a lot of uh, colorful photos out of that. But in the meantime, look at these. I mean, just, just gorgeous. You guys get out there, you go up uh, someplace, you send in those pictures, and I really do appreciate it. I appreciate each and every one of these shots. That's amazing. All right, then we got some videos to take a look at, too. This is from Ryan Seek. A little storm that tried to develop down there near uh, Sonora National Park. National Monument down there uh, near I-8. This thing, you know, kind of got going a little bit. And if you're under that thing, you're, you're getting some rain, you're getting some wind. There's a little bit of dust getting kicked up there. This is not one of those gigantic storms that Ryan sometimes gets pictures of and sends in because, unfortunately, it's just, you know, we're kind of at this um, piddling end of the monsoon. And, um, you know, if you get any storms that pop up, this is pretty much all you're going to get. But still, that's fantastic. I mean, I love looking at this stuff. So you guys do such a great job with all of these uh, various pictures and videos and all that. And I appreciate it so much in this monsoon season. I know it's been disappointing, but we've still managed to get some great pictures out of it nonetheless. And uh, people ask sometimes, hey, what's a good picture? Uh, let me start this one over. This is, this is from David as well. This is up there again. This is near the Sawtooth Mountains. And people say, well, what should I send in? What kind of pictures should I send in? Because sometimes people are wondering, you know, I've seen all kinds of pictures. Does it have to be a storm? Does it have to be a time-lapse video? Does it have to be anything fancy? No, of course not. Again, uh, you know, every day we have something here in Arizona that I think is among the best anywhere, and that's our sunrises and sunsets. And you send those in to us, and um, tell you what, those will get on here, of course. 
because those are sensational. Uh, blue skies, whatever. You're out there. You're you're by the pool. You're out there. You're you're hiking someplace. You know, David takes these pictures. He's up there. He's either backpacking someplace. He's you know usually he's uh, up on South Mountain or but sometimes out of state like these like these pictures and and videos and that's that's great too. So I I gotta tell you I appreciate all of this stuff. And so even pictures of food. People have sent in pictures of food. Why not? I mean, if you know me, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at food as well. I, I think uh, somebody said it's pictures of food right, right around 4th of July. Just, you know, they got the sausages going on the grill. Love that. But anyway, if you want to submit your photos or videos, groffshow at gmail.com is the email address. It's G-R-O-F-F show at gmail.com. Hey, sometimes when the weather isn't really cooperating and giving us a lot, hey, go, go to the standards, man. Go to the classics. Nothing like some grilling. Get your uh, hot dogs and your burgers and just send it. I don't know. I, I think sometime, one time someone just sent me a, a picture of a bunch of donuts. Again, we put it on here. Why not? So that's Photo Friday. Thank you guys so much for all of your participation. Really do appreciate it in all seriousness. Fantastic job, everybody. All right, let's get into it here. All right, the... Almanac from yesterday. I don't know. Do we really want to talk about this? Can we just go back to watching? Hold on. Let's just go back to let's go back to this. <laughs> do we have to do this part? Okay, here we go. 116 degrees was the high yesterday. That's right. 116 degrees. Obviously, that's a record high. We put that in yellow because not only was it a record high for the date, it is also a record high for the month of September. That is now a new gold standard, if you will, for heat here in the month of September. It's also the latest, obviously, in the year we've ever had a high of 116. The old record, 115. The morning low, 87. And obviously, you see those averages at 103 and 81. And uh, look, let's uh, let's review. So so that's that's 116. That was the high yesterday. We've got the running total. People ask seemingly every day now, what, where are we at in terms of our temperatures for the year? And here we go. Including today, because at midnight, we were still over 100 degrees. We've now had 110 degree day or 110 days with a high temperature at or above 100 in total this year. Uh, now, the record is 145. I think, I think that record is safe. Pretty low probability, although not a non-zero probability will break that. Uh, obviously, days with highs 110 plus. Now, we'll have to see. I, I Last I looked, it had not hit 110 yet, but it probably will today. So right now, we're sitting at 56 of those days. We've, bl we've blown out the old record there. Uh, 11 days with a high of 115 plus. That's courtesy of yesterday. We tacked on another one. We're not going to break that record uh, this year. But how about 37 days with a low of 90 plus? And by the way, this morning's low so far today, the low temperature has been 93 degrees. If that holds, that's a record warm low, not only for the date, but for the month of September. And so we'll have another 90 degree low to tack on. And we've done it when we've broken another record a uh, total number of days with a low of 80 degrees or higher. And that's 92. And again, We'll tack on another one for today, assuming that that holds, which, of course, it will. And consecutive days with highs over 100 degrees. Now we're sitting at 103 there. So that's your running scoreboard with all of that. Now let's talk about why it's just so darn hot. The upper level weather pattern. This tells you the story. High pressures in control across the entire western United States. And underneath that ridge, that 594 to 597 ridge, We've got sinking air. We've got substance. It's very dry air, just bone dry air. And so that heats very efficiently, even in these shorter days that we have now. And so with that, temperatures will still be very toasty once again today. However, that ridge is beginning to slide to the east, and we do expect at least a little bit of moisture to creep in here from Mexico uh, tomorrow and even into Sunday. And so a few showers and storms will be possible. Here's the watch warning map. Heat, of course, it's the big story out here in the West, the Pacific Northwest, the valleys of California, Southern California, the Mojave Desert, Arizona, uh, Southern Western Arizona, including the Phoenix area. That excessive heat warning is in effect until 8 p.m. tonight. Now, 
Just because that warning expires tonight doesn't mean tomorrow is going to be a picnic. Uh, high temperatures will still be above average, but just below the threshold that the National Weather Service uses to define excessive heat. But you shouldn't shouldn't let your guard down. Be out there. Make sure that you have plenty of water. If you're out and about, uh, stay hydrated, as I always tell you every day. The convective outlook. Got a risk of severe storms from parts of Kentucky through Ohio. Here in Arizona, we're in the green. That outlook technically runs through 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. There might be a pop-up storm, but I just don't think we're going to see anything here in Phoenix. Uh, and, and even across the northern part of the state, it's probably nothing really to get too excited about. Tomorrow, a slightly better coverage of storms is expected, but for today, very, very isolated. The tropics in the Atlantic, you know, it's getting a little bit noisy, but nothing really to get too concerned about. Uh, we've got this wave out there off the east coast of the United States. Not really worried about that forming into much of anything other than maybe a, a sort of subtropical or post-tropical or sort of a mid-latitude cyclone. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's this little wave out there that's coming out of the Western Caribbean up toward the Yucatan. And that does have about a 40% chance over the next five days to develop into something as it moves into the Bay of Campeche and then maybe moves north toward the Texas coast. But even at that, uh, that probably, that's the best chance we have on the board for anything to develop. There's that little wave right along the immediate coast of the, of the Gulf Coast there, and that's, that's not going to develop because it's ostensibly inland now. So we'll watch that system that moves up into the Bay of Campeche, but chance of development there is fairly low. And then the rest of the Atlantic Basin should remain relatively quiet. It is the climatological peak of the hurricane season right about now. September 10th is the climatological peak. And, eh, you know, we do expect things out here this time of the year, but it's been remarkably quiet for quite some time. Rainfall outlook, this is valid through Friday morning of next week. Rain amounts in Phoenix, nothing statewide, not much. A little bit across northern Arizona, the northwest plateau with rain amounts generally under one quarter of an inch. And I'd be surprised if we saw much of anything measurable or meaningful at all up there. But you may run into an isolated storm and any storm, even in this you know, rather pitiful monsoon season we've had, any storm could put down locally heavy rain in a short amount of time. So do be aware of that if you're heading up toward northern Arizona, or the Northwest Plateau, this weekend. All right. Let's check the models. Let's see what the future may hold. Here we go. This is the GFS. It is the 12Z run, and this is valid at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Troughing for the Great Lakes, the east. Out here in the west, boy, that is just a big old nasty 594 heat dome that's sitting basically right on top of us. What it means down at the surface for the rest of the day today, this afternoon, sunny, very hot, highs 108 to 112. That'll be yet another day with a high over 110 degrees. For tonight, mostly clear sky. Overnight lows should be around 80 to near 90. And then tomorrow, there is a bit of moisture that will increase across the state. Humidity levels bump up a bit. Widely scattered afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms for northern Arizona. But around here, I just, boy, those low levels are just still going to be fairly dry. Uh, and and the mid-levels will still be fairly warm. So I, I just don't really foresee a scenario where a storm manages to make it into Phoenix. But, you know, people in the comments are like, hey, I washed my car. I don't know. Anything's possible, right? Uh, otherwise, high temperatures tomorrow will will back off slightly. I anticipate highs somewhere between about 104 to 108 for tomorrow with a small increase in moisture, humidity levels, clouds. And that may knock temperatures back just a bit. Same thing on Sunday. Widely scattered, widely scattered showers and thunderstorms for northern Arizona. But around here, we stay dry. High temperatures, again, 104 to 108. Going into next week, some drier air starts to come back into the mix here. We get an isolated storm for northern Arizona, but we should remain dry with highs still around 104 to 108. We might bump it up a degree on Tuesday. As we go to Wednesday, we've got a trough that's developing along the Pacific Northwest coast and beginning to move on inland. And that should displace our ridge with some time. 
and temperatures may slowly begin to back off. I'd still say highs are probably going to be around 103 to 107 next to, uh, next Wednesday and maybe a degree lower by Thursday. But this is where the forecast uncertainty begins to come into the loop. And this is Friday. Now, the, the trough, the big trough, that upper low is moving on out, but there is this tropical cyclone that the GFS just absolutely insists is going to develop over the eastern Pacific and move northward up the Mexican coast, either the coast of Baja or into the uh, southern Gulf of, of California, which is where it's got it now on this run. And the GFS really wants to bring some moisture in here by late next week and the following weekend. Maybe not an entire tropical cyclone, but some moisture from that feature coming up here. And I am just not convinced that that's going to happen right now. I have seen that on, on some of the other deterministic European models and I, or, you know, model runs, and I've seen that on the ensembles, but uh, it's still... A mainly outlier solution. Synoptically speaking, high pressure is likely to remain sitting to the west of us, and so moisture intrusion would be limited at best in that scenario. But obviously, we're going to watch model trends and see if that changes. High temperatures should back off a little bit here. And highs will be somewhere around, I'd say, 100 to 104 if this is right. But that's still couple of degrees above those seasonal averages. But now 10 days, this is Saturday, or this is rather, this is Sunday, the 15th. And that still looks dry. Uh, the GFS, again, is you know, really trying to bring moisture into the southern part of the state, but with a synoptic pattern where you've got ridging sitting to the west of us, I don't know if, if that's going to happen. I don't know if that's realistic or not, but... You know, at this point, uh, we're still looking with uh, to you know, with at above average temperatures, even in this scenario. Although not nearly as hot as we have been, I guess. I guess that's good news. Now, let's show you here because there is a split in these models here. This is uh, rainfall for Phoenix coming off of the GFS ensemble. This goes out through the twentieth of September. And almost all the members have at least like a trace of rain or a couple hundredths of an inch of rain this weekend. And again, I, I'm just, I'm not sold on that. The GFS uh, output here has about a third of an inch over the next couple of weeks. There's a few members that really try to ramp up the tropical moisture. The European ensemble, kind of a flip-flop here, actually is a little bit higher than the GFS, nosing uh, closer to a half an inch. and actually. The control member here is up over three quarters of an inch. You've got a few extreme members in the data set here, but you also have a few members that show nothing at all. So again, there's, there's a larger spread out here in the models, especially as we get out toward 10 days and beyond due to the potential of a tropical system. But I'm not worried about that. And that is something that we will address if it even develops and if model trends continue in that direction. Look at the temperatures off the national blend of models just scorching hot again today. Tomorrow, this weekend, even early next week, highs remain way above average, but trending down as we get out there toward 10 days. And I have seen some of our deterministic model runs, which even try to bring us below the triple digits. But again, I'll believe it when I see it. All right, that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video is due back here on Monday morning, but of course, updates before that, if necessary, should you happen to enjoy these videos. And of course you do, be sure to subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell, leave those comments, questions, and suggestions. And I'll have you know that you can also support us by clicking that thanks icon below the video here on YouTube. Make those monetary contributions, $2, $5, $539,652.08. You can donate any or all of those amounts down there by clicking that thanks icon. Actually, I don't know. I think there's a limit on how much you can donate with the thanks icon, but I guess you could just kind of, you know, just hammer that over and over. I don't know. You could also donate to us via PayPal. Groffshow at gmail.com is that PayPal address. It is G-R-O-F-F show at gmail.com for PayPal. 
The executive producer of the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion is my one and only the sweetest of all time, the Asian sensation and proprietor of sweetchildaz.com.org and the Facebook page of the same name, Sweet Child Arizona. Talking about my Michelle, check her out, check out her videos, check out her blogs, check out everything Michelle related. It is all linked up down in the description of this video. So check that out. Um, you can also check out our streaming station available 24-7, 365. It's called KMGX. And what do we do there? Well, we play a ton of music and have a lot of fun with that. Thousands of songs, no repeats all day and all that cool stuff. Michelle and I work uh, endlessly, tirelessly, relentlessly to bring you that station. So do give that a listen as well. Free entertainment. What could be better? All right. Thank you guys so much for watching all of your continued support. It is immensely appreciated. Please be safe. Stay cool. Stay hydrated out there. Yeah, let's not look at that graphic. Okay. <laughs> and you guys have yourselves a great Friday and a wonderful weekend.